Well, this video is a response to the claim that the Quran has a miraculous description of the layers of the atmosphere. Um, now, I asked Muslim apologist Abdullah Andalasia of the Muslim Debate Initiative, what does the phrase in the Quran, seven heavens, refer to? And he replied, it's the seven layers of the atmosphere. Now, this is a view made popular by Haran Yahya. Here we can see the link, and it looks rather convincing. The Quran mentions seven layers of heaven, and there are seven layers of the atmosphere. But are there? Well, here's the problem. There are not seven layers of the atmosphere. In order to understand why, we need to understand what determines what an atmospheric layer is. Now here you can see me skydiving. Now my highest jump is from 23,000 feet, it's about 7,000 meters, and I've been corresponding with uh, this company, who are trying to realize the dream of making space diving a sport of the future, and hopefully I'll be doing it. Now, for anyone that's a skydiver, or maybe a mountain climber, or maybe a hill walker, there's something that becomes very apparent. As one goes to higher altitude, the temperature drops. Generally, the higher you go, the colder it gets. But this does not continue indefinitely. Eventually, the relationship flips, and in the second layer of the atmosphere, the stratosphere, the higher one goes, the higher the temperature becomes. This, then, is when we have a new layer of the atmosphere. So here we are looking at a pretty standard astronomy textbook, and let's take a look at the planetary science section. Now, uh, I'm using The Universe by Friedman. Um, what we see is that this flipping of the relationship between temperature and altitude occurs only a few times, generating uh, four layers of the atmosphere, in their case, the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, and the thermosphere. Now, above the thermosphere, the relationship between temperature and altitude becomes pretty much a straight line. This is called the exosphere. Um, now, most people include this as an atmospheric layer. That makes it five, although some, such as Friedman, don't. Now, whether you count the exosphere or not will give you either four or five layers of the atmosphere, but not seven. Now, on this Haranyaya website, we see that he's added the ionosphere and the magnetosphere to try and imply that there are seven layers of the atmosphere. Now what's funny is that if we search for different websites promoting the work of Haran Yahya, we find there are different, different claims as to what the extra layers are. On miracles of the Quran, we find it's the ionosphere and the magnetosphere. On evidence of creation, we find it's the ionosphere and the ozone layer. Now on other websites, such as this one, we have the thermosphere ignored for some reason, and they've included the tropopause as a layer of the atmosphere. Now, the pauses are boundaries between atmospheric layers. They are not generally considered atmospheric layers themselves, as we shall see in a minute. So, why are the ionosphere, the magnetosphere, the ozone layer not considered layers of the atmosphere? Well, by now, you should know the answer. For example, the ozone layer is actually located inside the stratosphere. So it can hardly be considered a separate layer of the atmosphere. But moreover, the relationship between temperature and altitude does not change when one ascends above the ozone layer. Similarly, the ionosphere is an extension of the thermosphere. Now, it's always a good idea to check some independent sources. So let's do that. Here's Wikipedia. Note, they have five layers of the atmosphere. They call them the principal layers. Now, if you add what they call non-principal layers, you still don't get seven. Uh, this website is Windows to the Universe. Note they also have five layers of the atmosphere. This is um, an online teaching aid set up by the Association for Earth and Science Teachers. Um, now, this is NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab. Notice they have five layers of the atmosphere. Now, if we go on another NASA website, um, here we see they've put the pauses we mentioned before on, on the graphic here, but even they don't call them layers of the atmosphere. Uh, look at the top here, and you'll see they have four layers, like the Friedman book. Um, now, this is the National Association of Atmospheric Research, and they also have five layers of the atmosphere. Uh, this is the UK Met Office website, and it uses the same graphic as we've seen before, and agreeing that there are five layers. So, from an understanding of what defines an atmospheric layer, we can see there are not seven. And from many different websites, we can see the same independent sources confirming that conclusion. But let's put all that aside. Let's assume there are seven layers of the atmosphere. This is not going to help the argument because they quote verse, verse 41.12, or Surah 41.12, where we're told that there are stars in the lower heaven. So if the seven heavens are seven layers of the atmosphere, 
then the lowest heaven is the troposphere. This would imply there are stars in the lowest layer of the atmosphere. Our nearest star is the Sun, which is 93 million miles away, not exactly inside the troposphere, which extends to, on average, 56,000 feet. So this argument is utterly busted. It would imply that the Sun and other stars are in the atmosphere, lower than where some aeroplanes fly. I don't think so. Now, one defence has been that it's not the stars that are in the lower heaven, but the beauty of the stars. Now, anyone that knows anything about astronomy is that the turbulence of the atmosphere interferes with the beauty of the stars. We get much, much better views the higher we go. And also, the weather is in the lowest level of the atmosphere predominantly, so also interrupting our view of the stars. And that's why scientists build telescopes either on mountains or preferably in space, such as Hubble, we put them in orbit. So our view of the stars is far more beautiful, as I think you can see. Here's a picture of Hubble, and there's some beautiful stars that we can see, because this telescope is above the atmosphere. So the argument is busted. Thank you very much for watching.